It was a Saturday afternoon, much like any other Saturday afternoon, and as usual, I was sitting in the lounge watching TV. My life is so boring. Nothing exciting ever happens around here. Then suddenly, out of nowhere, I heard an almighty boom. I looked to my right and was shocked to see that a car had come crashing through the wall and was stopped just inches away from the chair I was sitting on. For a few seconds, I was frozen in shock. But then when I saw who was in the driver's seat, the shock turned to panic. Mom! My mom opened the car door and crawled out. I jumped up and ran to her, but by the time I reached her, she had already fallen unconscious. Hold on though, before I continue, you have already subscribed and hit the notification bell, haven't you? Well, if not, make sure you do that now. What happened next is all a bit of a blur. I remember shaking my mom, trying to get her to open her eyes, but she was out cold. The next thing I heard sirens coming towards our house. I guess someone must have called for the police in an ambulance. Excuse me, miss. Let us take a look at her. Please help her. She's my mom. Okay, okay. Don't worry. We will take good care of her. I stood there trembling, <laughs> tears rolling down my eyes. Please, God, let her be okay. The paramedics checked her over. We have a pulse and she is breathing, but we will need to take her to hospital for a full checkup. Is there someone that can take care of you? I will call my dad. They put my mom onto a stretcher and took her out to the ambulance. I grabbed my phone and tried to punch in my dad's number, but my hands were shaking too much I couldn't do it. Here, let me do that for you. The policeman took the telephone out of my hands and called my dad. I heard him explaining to my dad what had happened and where my mom had been taken to. We will take your daughter straight to the hospital if you could meet her there. The policeman put the phone down and turned to me. Don't worry, your dad will be at the hospital when we get there. Now, what's your name? K k carly Okay, Carly, you can come with us now and we will take you there. What about the car on the wall? Don't you worry yourself about that. One of our men will make all the arrangements. I followed the policeman out to his car. I was in a complete daze. I heard some of our neighbors calling out to me. Carly, are you okay? I can't believe what's happened. Is your mom okay? I didn't answer them. I didn't even look their way. I didn't say a word on the drive to the hospital. I felt numb with shock. How could it have happened? Mom is always such a careful driver. When we arrived at the hospital, my dad came running over to me. Carly, thank God you're all right. I can't imagine what might have happened if you'd been standing by that wall. I'm okay, Dad, really. I'm fine. It's Mom I'm worried about. How is she? The doctors have taken her into surgery. Did she wake up? Not yet, but the doctor said that it's normal. Her body is in shock. She doesn't have any serious injuries, but she does need some stitches. With that, I burst into tears. I sobbed and sobbed. Oh, come on, Carly. Everything's going to be all right. Don't cry, darling. But it's all my fault. No, it isn't. How could it be your fault? Because I was sitting there complaining about how nothing exciting ever happened. Then the next thing, Mom came crashing through the wall. Carly, it was just an accident. That's all. Come here. I let my dad put his arms around me and I let my head on his chest. As soon as I felt his hug, I began to feel better. Mr. Evans? Yes? I turned around and saw a doctor standing there. Your wife is out of surgery. Everything went well. Oh, thank goodness. Can we see her? I'm afraid she is still in a coma, but you can sit by her side for a while. My dad and I followed the doctor as he led us down to the room where my mom was. When I saw her lying in the bed, I gasped. Oh, she looks so pale. We're confident she'll make a full recovery, but it's difficult to know until she wakes up out of the coma. When do you think that will be? We have no idea. It could be hours. It could be days or even weeks. Weeks? Yes, unfortunately, we have no way to control it. It's down to your mom and her body. I couldn't believe how the day had turned out. That morning when I had said goodbye to my mom as she went off to work, I had no idea that it might be the last time I would be able to speak to her for weeks. For the first few days after the accident, my dad and I never left my mom's side. But gradually, as the weeks went by, we began to spend less and less time with her. There wasn't anything we could do, we just had to wait. And even though the weeks then turned into months, we never gave up hope that one day she would wake up from the coma. When I did go to see her, I would sit by her bed and tell her all about the things I had been doing, stuff that I'd done at school and things I was looking forward to. The doctors had told us that even though she couldn't answer us, they were certain that she could hear us. But by the time she had been in the coma for 10 months, I was fed up with going to the hospital. What's the use, Dad? She's never going to wake up. I can't do it anymore. 
It's okay, Carly. I understand. So after that, I didn't go to visit my mom again. I just needed to get on with my life. At school, I could pretend that everything was normal. My friends all knew what had happened to my mom, but they had stopped asking about her long ago. It was a Monday morning, and I was sitting in class, when all of a sudden the door opened, and I saw my dad standing there. Dad? She's awake, Carly! Your mom is awake! What? Oh my god! My friends all gasped. Wow, Carly, that's brilliant news. I looked at my teacher. She just smiled and nodded to me. Go on, Carly. Go with your dad. I grabbed my bag, then ran with my dad to his car. I was so excited and my face was beaming. When we got to the hospital, we ran into my mom's room. She was sitting up in bed. My dad went over and gave her a hug. Darling, I've been so worried about you. Then I went over and hugged her, but instead of her hugging me back, she just sat there. I could sense that she was being really distant with me. Darling, this is Carly, your daughter. I watched as my mom crossed her arms. That's not my daughter. My heart felt like it had been torn out of my chest when I heard her say that. Well, you would feel the same way, wouldn't you? Of course she's your daughter. No, no she isn't. Mom, it's me, Carly. Don't you remember me? Don't worry, it can sometimes happen with patients when they wake from a coma. They don't always recognize everyone straight away. We will need to keep her in for a few more days to monitor her. Come on, Carly, let's get home. Your mom needs to rest. It was hard leaving the hospital knowing that my mom didn't remember me. But my dad was right. I felt sure that after a few days rest, she would know who I was. But the next time we went to see her, she still didn't want anything to do with me. I mean, she was fine with my dad. She was laughing and joking. But whenever I tried to speak to her, she just bottled up. It was as though she hated me. I felt really sad at the time. All I wanted was for my mom to put her arms around me and tell me that she loved me, but there didn't seem any likelihood of that happening. Just then, the doctor came in to check on her. How are you feeling today, Mrs. Evans? I feel fine. When can I go home? I'm afraid we can't let you go home until we know you are 100% better. Once you finally recognize that Carly is your daughter, you will be able to leave. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw my mom look at me. Her face seemed filled with hatred. But when my dad turned to her, her face changed. She looked happy to see me. I was really confused. I wondered if I had imagined the way my mom had looked at me. The following day when we arrived at the hospital, I was shocked to hear my mom calling my name. Carly? Carly, is that you? Yes, mom, it's me. Oh, darling, I'm so pleased to see you. I couldn't believe it. Finally, she knew who I was. Oh, mom, do you remember me now? Yes, of course I do. You're my daughter. A tear started rolling down my cheek. I was so happy. When the doctor came in and heard what my mom had said, he was really pleased. Well, that's great news. Looks like you'll be able to go home, Mrs. Evans. My mom looked so relieved and happy. We will just need to sign the release papers. I'll get one of the nurses onto it now. When we arrived home, my mom went and sat down in the lounge. I'll make dinner for us, Carly. You can take your mom a cup of tea. It felt so lovely to have mom back home. Finally, life was going to be normal again. But when we sat down to eat our dinner, I couldn't help feeling a bit strange. Is my mom giving me an evil look? But then dad came in and she smiled at me. Maybe I imagined it. Later that night, I was in the middle of a deep sleep when suddenly something woke me. What was that noise? I turned to look at the door and almost jumped out of my skin. Ah! My mom's face was staring straight at me. My dad came running into my room. What's the matter? It's mom. My dad led my mom back to their bedroom and then came back to speak to me. It's nothing to be concerned about, Carly. She's just a bit confused. Now go back to sleep, okay? Okay, dad. The next day, things were just like they had been at dinner the night before. In front of my dad, my mom was full of smiles and acted really loving towards me. But whenever he was out of sight, she was spiteful and mean. I was really scared of her change in moods. That night when I went to bed, I locked the door to my room. I didn't want any chance of a repeat performance of the night before. I hadn't been asleep for very long when a noise woke me. I looked towards the door, but there was no one there. Suddenly, I heard the window smash and glass shattered all over the floor. I turned to look and saw my mom climbing in through the window. She flew across the room and leaped at me. Oh my God, is she trying to kill me? Help, help. I could hear my dad knocking on my bedroom door, but he couldn't get in because it was locked. Ah! 
The next thing I knew, everything went black. When I woke up, I was in a hospital room. I looked to my left and saw my dad sitting there beside me. Dad, what happened? It's okay, Carly. You just blacked out. Mom was attacking me. I know. The last thing I remember was you knocking at my bedroom door. I could hear you screaming, but the door was locked. So how did you get into my room? I kicked the door in. When I saw what your mom was doing, I grabbed her and pulled her off you. What did she do? She just stood there and started laughing. Laughing? Yes, like a weird cackling. Where is mom now? I'm sorry, Carly. The doctors have said that your mom is crazy. They have sent her to an asylum. I couldn't believe it. Surely my mom wasn't insane. I want to go and see her. I don't think that's a very good idea. I mean it, Dad. I want to see her for myself. Even though my dad wasn't very keen, I eventually managed to persuade him to take me to see her. When we arrived at the asylum, the nurse took us down to the room where my mom was being held. It was like being in a prison. There were bars on the windows and all the patients were locked inside their rooms. The nurse unlocked mom's door and we went inside. She looked surprised to see us. What are you two doing here? I want to ask you something, mom. Okay, go on then. Why did you do it? Why did you attack me? Because you're not my daughter. She is your daughter. I thought you said you recognized her. Yes, I am, Mom. No, you're not. You're an imposter. What have you done with my daughter? Where is... Suddenly, the nurse came in and grabbed hold of my mom as she carried on ranting away. I think you better go now. She is getting upset. Come on, Carly. There's nothing more we can do. As my dad led me out of the room, I realized that everything my mom had said before had been a lie. It was obvious that she had pretended to know who I was, just so she could be released from the hospital. It had all been fake. That was the last time that I saw my mom. I tried not to think about how it had been before she had come crashing through the wall of our house, when she wasn't crazy. Or had she always been crazy, and we just didn't notice it?